Um, we're going to check on the, uh, the status of the spawning walleye here in the Sturgeon River. Um, we're in the southeast corner of Burt Lake at Indian River. Um, we're going to try to get up into the sturgeon and see, do like a walleye ripeness check basically. We're trying to collect gametes to, um, to raise up walleye at our hatchery so we can stock them out later this year. What are we up to today, Bill? We're going to go check out the Sturgeon River and uh, see if it's possible to shock some walleyes. This is the uh, chandelier for the anode on the shocking arm. You want to set it just so. So we've got the output mode set at 60 pulses per second. And this is the voltage. And then we manipulate the pulse width to vary the amps. So how far does the electricity go as far as, um, like how far out, what's the radius? I'd say a good 10 yards out, kind of from this, these uh, anode rings, mm -hmm. 10 to 15 yards. Yeah. They, can, they can feel it in the, you know, the, the edge of the range, it just tickles them and usually it just pushes them. Big one. Better than I expected today. I thought the river was going to be much higher and cloudier. So not too bad. It looks like we may have a few females. That'll be the key. We don't see many walleyes with them, do we? No. That might be the first I remember. Wow. That's how we do it. 20 walleye total. Seven males and, or seven females and 13 males. So we have this net pen and uh, we're sorting males and females right now. So right now we just have a bunch of males. So we're gonna go into this side of the pen and uh, we're kind of just waiting on the females to get right. We're just gonna kind of hang out here for a few days. Hi, my name is Caroline Keeson. I've been working here for five years, and I've been the water quality specialist for the past seven or eight months, maybe. Let's see, well, water quality is important for many things. Number one, uh, fish. Fish need water, or clean water, to be able to live. And also by design, uh, humans who are either eating the fish for sustainability, or if they are um, eating the fish for commercial uses, or if they're just recreating, but we all need fish for that. Um, water quality is important for aesthetics, it's important for primary kind of recreational uses, uh, aquatic wildlife, sometimes it's important for drinking water, uh, it can be important for ceremonial uses. So on streams, uh, we use a hydrolab to take the temperature, depth, conductivity, pH, uh, and dissolve oxygen. And then we also take uh, water samples for nutrients. We do total nitrogen and total phosphorus. We uh, take a sample for chloride and a sample for total suspended solids. Um, the last month we did macroinvertebrates as well as a bioindicator and we also take observations like uh, erosion, plants in the water, or what is the riparian uh, corridor like. Um, my favorite thing about working here is being outside all the time. We get to see a lot. Um, so we have a pretty good handle on what the water is like in Emmett County because we work here a lot. And my other favorite thing is really the education outreach and getting youth interested in water and why it's important. Well, I thought an interesting aspect to um, the 
Anishinaabe culture is that women are the water keepers. Mm -hmm. um, so when a position like this opened up, I was really um, wanting to get into that and to, you know, really be a part of that. Um, you know, I feel this job is really important um, because water is really an integral part of, um, of our environment and it's really important to be able to keep, keep those waters clean um, for both us and obviously all the wildlife. And, yeah. I'm Jason Smith. I'm the Great Lakes researcher for the Little Traverse Bay Band. Um, my, my job has a lot of facets. I'm, I'm doing work all around the Great Lakes in 1836 waters. Uh, but my main fish is cisco, and it's a fish of many names. So it's known as lake herring, cisco. Um, I tend to call it Otuna P, the, the Odawan word for, for cisco. Um, and this is a fish that was a, was a keystone species here in Lake Michigan prior to 1950. Through many, many different variables, it has it's become much less abundant in the lake, and 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 so we're trying to document not only the abundance but spawning stocks and and even the range throughout the lake for this fish. This is a cisco. Once one of the most common species in the lake. You, we're nearly extirpated in the 1950s and 60s. We have pretty good evidence that they're recovering right now, and it would be a really important fish to recover for this ecosystem. Yeah. So, so to me, the importance of, of this cisco work is, is one that it's a native species. Two, it is a species that has a long, long history with with, with the Odawa people that lived here. You know, ten thousand to fifty thousand year history with with, with these people. So one of the amazing things with our Cisco is just the size that they achieve here in Lake Michigan. These fish probably weigh two times as much as, as Cisco any place else, and they actually weigh five or eight times as much as many of the Cisco in the world. So, so it's a fish that is very different here, and we need to be really careful with that. 442. And it's, it's really a keystone species in the lake. It is a link between the bottom of the food web and the top of the food web. And, and it's a link that's kind of missing in Lake Michigan today. There's, there's very few fish in the lake performing this job. It's a, it's a job that has recently been performed by, by an invasive alewife. Alewife numbers are, are much lower than they have been in 50 years. And so maybe this is a time that we can help Otunapi come back and take back this niche that has historically been his.